Hi everyone, so we've come to the time where it's post contest and you're just wondering what on earth do I do now because everything's finished but I guess in today's video what I wanted to do is to kind of keep a little bit of the spark going with Eurovision. I'm going to be discussing some of the results in comparison to my predictions, giving an overview of results that I thought were surprising, stuff that potentially was a bit underrated or overrated in my eyes. And yeah, I'm going to kind of do a couple more videos about this season as well. A proper review of the contest will be coming soon. I usually put a bit more effort into those videos. And I will be also talking about the UK in a video as well, because I think that's a whole topic on its own that should be discussed. And it's an exciting time right now for UK Eurovision fans, and I want to kind of cover that. So what I'm gonna do first is just go through the results of semi-final one and then compare it with what I predicted and then go through the semi-final two results too and then the grand final results and just give a kind of let's just have a little bit of a discussion and also let me know in the comments what you think about some of these results were you surprised were you not surprised that kind of thing so how I've done this is everything I've put in green is something I predicted accurately. Stuff in yellow is near correct, so one or two places off. Stuff that's in white is, you know, fairly accurate, but a little bit further off from what the real result was. And then anything in red is way off, so above six places. So we'll start with semi-final one. This one I had kind of a decent result with predicting. I've predicted seven of the 10 qualifiers, but in terms of the actual placings, I predicted that Ukraine came first, that Armenia came fifth, and that Bulgaria came 16th. So I basically got three right, but then in the split result, I got four right in the jury. So I predicted that Greece would win the jury vote, Portugal would come fourth, Latvia would come 11th, and Lithuania would come ninth in those results. And then for televote, I predicted that Ukraine would win the televote, that Albania would come ninth, that Denmark would be 13th, Switzerland 16th and Bulgaria 14th. So I'm actually quite pleased with that because I did get a lot of green in this case. But the ones that I was really surprised about, so we'll start with these ones. Okay, let's start with Latvia. So I was convinced from the get go that this one would be qualifying even though quite a few people in discussions, in comment sections or on Twitter were very much convinced that this was an NQ from the moment it was released. I had faith in this one because I thought there were some musical ideas about it that potentially could pick up some jewellery points, but I thought also just the, the whole way of aesthetic of it, the meaning, the comedy element would have picked some televote points, but actually they did super super badly in the televote they came 15th place in the televote which was shocking in fact if someone came above them in the televote bulgaria bulgaria got more televote points than latvia which i thought was really surprising so i thought they'd come third in the televote they came 15th and then i also thought they would finish seventh overall they came 14th so they weren't even close to qualifying so in this case, I'm a little bit disappointed with that because it's one of the songs, and I'll talk about the other one in a sec, that had the most complex chords, very interesting arrangement. And what happened is the final ended up having songs that weren't as compositionally complex or interesting for people that have musical backgrounds. So that was a bit upsetting for me, but still, it's just kind of a bad streak for Latvia in general because they've just been non-qualifying all of these times for years and years and it just feels like they really need to turn things around because we know they're capable of sending good songs sometimes so I'm hoping that their national final next year will have a little bit of a revamp or maybe they'll go internal switch it up and go internal that would be interesting another one which i got severely wrong was switzerland so i thought they would come 15th in the semi they actually came ninth. so i thought initially they would get a good jury score because it had a jury bait element to it so they placed fifth in the juries i thought they'd come seventh so that was interesting i was quite close there but televote wise this is where i got it correct because i thought they'd come 16th in the televote they did that's 
not great and of course in the final they got zero points so i thought in this case the staging was okay but i thought the overall package the song even though i liked the song i just felt like it went into the final in place of somebody else unfortunately so i did feel sorry for him when he got zero because it didn't feel like it was a zero point song it just felt like it was more of a single figures televote song so i hope he doesn't get put off from doing other competitive events because there's potential in that artist and it's just a shame on the night it didn't go too well and then of course one of the biggest shocks of this was croatia finished in 11th place i predicted that they would come dead last so i was really really surprised with this one what i what i feel to kind of grasp about this and what i completely neglected was actually the vocal performance was really good and she actually qualified with the juries so she was 10th in the juries i predicted 14th and then televote she was actually 12th so she didn't even come last in the televote like i predicted so I really do feel like Croatia has had bad luck for two years in a row, obviously coming 11th with Albina in 2021. So that really did feel like a massive kick in the chest when I saw that they came 11th in a way where I felt like, oh, that's actually pretty good because this was actually appreciated and I was worried it would come last. It didn't. But also they've missed out on the final once again. So that was a bit of a shock. But Looking back, I do kind of see how this finished 11th and I think they should be pleased with that and they should keep trying. So that's pretty good. And of course, another country which I completely got off in terms of the jury mark was Slovenia. So I predicted they would come sixth in the juries and they actually came second from last in 16th place. So in fact, Bulgaria, I keep coming back to Bulgaria, but Bulgaria got more jury points than Slovenia which I felt was just a little bit of a slap in the face. Obviously the most upsetting thing about this contest is that Slovenia finished in 40th so they came absolutely dead last in the whole competition which does not feel right to me. I've obviously gone on and on and on about this song and a lot of people don't agree with me. A lot of people don't like Disco by LPS and I understand that but what I see with this is it's just loads of young musicians having fun, but also playing good music. Chords, in this case, which just blew everyone else out of the water in, in, in my eyes. And the fact that the juries didn't score them very high at all is really upsetting. And then for that reason, my pillow is getting muted backwards again on behalf of LPS, because I just feel like that was undeserved to be 40th in this whole competition oh it just really hurts me a bit with that and what it does is it stops different genres making it to the final it stops young people and it stops musicians giving Eurovision a proper go because they feel like they might put their heart and soul into something and really kind of do something interesting chord wise arrangement wise similar with Latvia and they've really really bombed in both halves of the vote which feels just it makes me upset and I really hope this isn't kind of a warning sign that we're not going to see it more experimental and, and different genres and different styles of music coming into Eurovision in the next couple of years because of these results. I don't want delegations to be put off by Latvia's result and Slovenia's result in this case and it's kind of upsetting but I am pleased with the ones I predicted and of course I was a little bit disappointed actually that Greece didn't do so well in their televote so I thought they'd come fourth they came eighth looking back now obviously it was one of the slower songs of the semi-final and I think people gravitated more towards things like Moldova obviously Moldova did really well they came second in the televote in the semi-final which is fantastic so those are my kind of thoughts on the semi-final but overall I think some good songs went through to the final and that's fantastic so let's have a look at semi-final two now so this one as well I was quite pleased with the ones I got correct so in terms of predictions overall I got nine out of ten in terms of placings I got Serbia in third Czech Republic in fourth Estonia in fifth Romania in ninth San Marino in 14th and Malta in 16th so I actually got seven placings correct here 
And then in terms of split vote, I predicted Sweden would win the jury vote, Serbia would be eighth in the jury vote, Romania would be 14th in the jury vote, and Belgium would be fourth in the jury vote. So I got those correct. And then Televote, I only got two of these, Serbia second and Cyprus ninth. Everything else, there's a lot of yellow here. So I got things quite close. Overall, putting Poland as the winner of the semi-final was a mistake. I really rooted for this song and I thought it was going to do so much better than it did. And it actually came seventh in the juries, which is shocking. I thought this was going to be up there in, in the top two with the juries in the semi. So that was really strange to me, but I guess people just didn't like that song as much as me. And perhaps I was a little bit biased in this case. I don't know, I try not to be. Other jury predictions that I actually did really badly in as in more than six places difference was Cyprus. So I thought Cyprus would be 12th. They came 18th. They actually came last with the juries, which I feel personally is a little bit too low for them. Yes, their performance wasn't the best of the night. The staging unfortunately didn't work. And also the vocals were sharp. So she was clashing with the backing track because she was just singing, pushing just a little bit too high up in her vocals which is probably to do with nerves or inexperience. I don't know, but it was a shame. But last just feels like just completely kind of left field, to be honest. I thought Ireland would be a jury qualifier in 10th, but they were actually 16th, which feels really low as well, because I thought, even though I didn't particularly love Ireland's song, I thought they actually staged it really well. And the colours and the pyro that they used was just about enough, I felt, for them to qualify. So that was a bit shocking to me. And of course, another one is Montenegro. I thought they'd be 11th with the juries. They came 17th. Very, very low in my opinion. Again, but unfortunately, I just don't think the vocals were Vladina's best. And potentially the staging got a bit lost because it was quite slow moving, pedestrian. And unfortunately, it just didn't stand out amongst its competitors. So looking back, I can see why that's low, but I don't agree with it. And of course, North Macedonia, that's another shocker. So the country that I predicted to come absolutely dead last in the semi actually came 11th, which was so shocking. But my dad was completely onto it because if you remember his predictions, he put North Macedonia as third going through to the final. So he, for some reason, connected with this song more than me. And he was onto something because the juries would have put Andrea through in 10th. And the public wouldn't. The public would have put her in 15th. But still, that is quite a shock. I think a lot of people were banking on this one for coming last. And it didn't. It actually did pretty well. So that's pretty good for North Macedonia. I think they should use that as leverage to try harder at Eurovision, you know? I think they could end up being in the final next year if they just give it that extra push. And then another one to note is Azerbaijan. So this one was shocking to just completely and utterly shocking. So Nadia was a jury qualifier in sixth. I predicted him as fifth. So I always said to myself, this is a jury top five. It nearly was, it was sixth, right? And I always saw this as a qualifier, but the general public didn't because they gave it zero points. And this song didn't qualify at all in the televote half. It came dead last yet it still went through to the final. So I felt like that was a little bit strange, not gonna lie. I, I mean, I thought the performance was okay. Vocals weren't the best in the semi-final. He actually did a better performance in the final, but zero points, that's quite shocking. So a lot of people didn't connect with this and they didn't pick up the phone to vote, yet it still went through. And I think the EBU really need to look at results like that and think, is that fair? You know, maybe it's the best possible way of dealing with it is that the points add up to eventually be a qualifier. But if there was some kind of rule in place where if you get zero points in either half of the vote, you know, you should, maybe you shouldn't go through. And then obviously North Macedonia would have gone through instead. So that's quite shocking to me. I'm not sure what's gone on there. But yeah, I was really, really surprised at just how low this one was. I kind of was pleased with Serbia because I predicted every single split result and place in general for Constructor. That was the one I got like a clean sweep of all my predictions. So that's pretty good. And I was quite confident with Romania as well because I said they'd come ninth. 
overall, 14th in the juries, and then I said 6th in the televote, and they were actually 5th, so they did a lot better than a lot of people expected, so I was really pleased about that. Yeah, so let's then move on to the grand final. Let's start off by talking about, in general, the running order and how that might have had a negative slash positive effect on some of these songs. So for instance, people opening the show like the Czech Republic scored five points in the public vote, which feels very much like the running order was detrimental to them. But then again, it can be argued, obviously, Romania then followed after them in second place, which is the, the slot of death. And they got 53 televote points, which is actually a pretty decent result for them. What I think about this year in terms of the running order was that the main thing that I think let the show down slightly was how so many ballads got drawn into the second half and so many up-tempo songs got drawn into the first half, which then allowed Moldova, for instance, being kind of in this sandwich between so many ballads to just completely stand out. And they came second in the televote overall with like 230 something points, which is just insane. So obviously that one was going to do really, really well in the televote anyway, because it's very unique. And a lot of people do like kind of folk music and music that gets your foot tapping, that's fine. But I wonder whether if the running order was drawn in a slightly different way. In This is like, if I was in charge, and then if my theory was used, I don't think Moldova would have got as high of a telephone. I think what's happened in this case is that the running order being drawn based on someone picking a slot out of a, out of a bowl, and then it says first or second half, didn't completely work in this case. And I think what would actually be better and you may agree or disagree with me, but let me know down below, of course. What I think would be better is to draw countries into the running order based on a random selection, but the pots that they pick the cards out of are based on BPM, so beats per minute, basically to do with the song's tempo. So I think there should be a category of three. There should be a bowl for slow tempo songs, so ballads, and tempo songs below like let's say 80 BPM. And then the one in the middle, so mid-tempo songs, stuff like what the Netherlands sent, that kind of thing. That would be another bowl. And then up-tempo songs in another bowl. And then an equal distribution, depending on how many songs are in each bowl of first and second half slots. So then they're picking at random where they're gonna be in the running order in terms of first or second half. But it means that songs depending on how many slow mid-tempo and fast songs there are are being distributed fairly across the running order and then what that means is that the producers can then put a decent running order together songs stand out more and everyone has a chance of shining instead of being kind of ballad 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 up tempo ballad 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 mid-tempo show closer up tempo that's what happened so my theory is probably fl flawed in so many ways, but that's how I see it. Like it would make so much more sense if you would just draw songs fairly into each half, but based on their tempo instead. I think that would be interesting. It would keep your audience gripped as well, because they would, there was probably a lot of people that were getting fed up with all these ballads. Our own commentator was kind of going on about, oh, it's another ballad and it's another ballad, but watch out for Moldova, because that's going to wake you up. And then what happened is that Moldova got sort of more special treatment than other songs. And I'm not trying to hate on Moldova, because I have said their name about 10 times now. And I don't, I, I really do like their song. That, is what I think was emerging from that situation. So that's just a theory of mine, but let me know obviously what you think. So in terms of my predictions, I only got two right. <laughs> Last year, I think I got five. So two this year, it was a bit more tricky to predict, but the two songs that I got correct was Germany in 25th place and Finland in 22nd place. Everything else was plus or minus two songs out. And then there was about four songs which I got completely and utterly wrong in the just complete wrong place. Obviously I predicted that Spain was going to win this year. You're probably laughing at me throughout that video, probably right now, and honestly 
maybe I should have just listened to the betting odds because I actually flexed up my predictions by extrapolating the betting odds, flexing it into my result. And then it ended up with Ukraine being first, Spain being second, and then everything else was relatively the same. I'll just show you on the screen. So that would have given me an extra correct result, basically. I still would have had Finland in 22nd, still would have had Germany last, and then Ukraine would have been the winner. But I just felt like I didn't want to listen to the odds because then it would have almost made my video not as authentic because I would have been le being led down the garden path instead of having my own theory. So yes, I did think Spain was going to win. They came third. They're still close, still top three. So I'm pleased with that result. They got one of their best results in a, in a, in a very, very long time. And they should be so happy with that. And of course, Ukraine won with a landslide. They got a record-breaking televote score. Was it 439 points? That, it immediately made me just tear up seeing the solidarity, everyone coming together to show support for Ukraine. I know a lot of people firstly don't agree with political voting at Eurovision. There's been years and years and years and years where I've kind of cringed when the Cypriot <laughs> commentator goes Greece like that because you just know it's coming. But this year I felt it was different. Obviously I would have preferred if the contest was fairer quote unquote but in this case it's like you know, there's a country right now that's being torn apart for like no apparent reason other than one man. And unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of people who don't think Ukraine is a, is the valid winner of this year's contest, which feels so wrong. Like there's people dying right now. This doesn't even matter Eurovision in the grand scheme of things, right? So I think people should just accept that Ukraine's the winner, support them, support Kalash Orchestra, be happy for the UK and Spain and Sweden for their top five finishes and just chill, you know, that's how I feel. But I'm sure there's so many people that are very supportive of Ukraine, don't really care in the grand scheme of things that they've had their third win because it really doesn't matter. It's a song contest, it's a bit of fun, it's just for enjoyment and yeah. Let's just all take a chill pill. <laughs> anyway, going back to the running order and the predictions. So I got about half-ish of my predictions plus or minus two within correctness. So that's pretty good. But a couple of songs I completely just got wrong. So one of them was Poland. Obviously, I've mentioned this already, but... I predicted Poland was coming fifth and they finished nowhere near that. They finished 12th, which is pretty low. I thought this would at least be top 10, but a lot of people didn't respond to this track. Juries didn't really respond, nor did the public. And that felt kind of shocking to me because I thought at least Christian's voice would have been rewarded with points. And it really just didn't finish anywhere, which is kind of a shame because it's one of Poland's best efforts in a long time. But yeah, I was well off with that. But I'll hold my hands up. Like, that's fine. Another one was Czech Republic. So I thought they'd come 11th and they actually finished 21st. So I was 10 spaces away, which is ma a massive difference. So obviously running order completely destroyed their chances. Five points in the public vote. I thought their performance was fine. Really nice staging, strobe lighting, that kind of thing. But just... All in all, it didn't make an impact enough on people to pick up the phone. Juries didn't really like this. I mean, electronic music doesn't do too well at Eurovision anyway, which was a shame. Yeah, I just felt like coming in the bottom five was not deserved at all for this entry. Another one that I completely got wrong was France. So I said 16th and they finished 24th. Second last for this song? Like, are, are you okay? I just felt like... That was so left field. That's, that's how I feel. I mean, I remember when I was doing my prediction video, I, I think I said something like, some of you might be a bit surprised that I put France so low down here because a lot of people think they're gonna finish in the top 10. They got barely any points. They got like seven and eight points. It just felt really low, but yeah. I don't know what to, what else to say. Potentially it was the running order. Maybe it was just how quirky and avant-garde the tune was. 
it, it stood out for sure, but maybe people didn't vibe with it. I, I don't know, because I think it's quite an excellent piece of music on the studio cut. But I hope that doesn't put France off from sending more experimental tunes in the future, because it was a breath of fresh air in this running order. But it just wasn't rewarded, in my opinion, as highly as it should have been. And then, of course, Portugal. So this one is a pleasant surprise. I ranked this as coming 17th, but they actually finished in ninth place in the top 10, which is fabulous. This is one of my favourite tracks of the year. I think it's just really beautiful. It's very subtle and they did a really good job with the staging. I just loved the camera angles, the intimacy of it all, the darkness, and then a little bit of colour, kind of purple tones coming in there. I thought they did a really good job. And they, of course, were third in the running order, yet they did so well. And I think this is just another reason why we should always be watching out for what Portugal sends at Eurovision, because they have been consistently doing quite well. They obviously won in 2017. They finished last in 2018, which I felt was like completely wrong. They should have been a lot higher than that. Didn't qualify in 2019, despite that song being one of the most experimental of the year. Black Mamba last year did quite well. And then this year they've had a top 10 finish, so that's fantastic. So yeah, this one I don't mind that I've got it so wrong because I'm actually happy that it was so much higher than I thought. So yeah, everything else was pretty much in line with what I expected. Obviously, another one which... I was a bit off with was Australia so I thought they were coming 10th and they came 15th in the end and that's obviously because of that ridiculously low public vote. A lot of you would have seen my initial reaction to this song. I didn't vibe with it much. It's still not one of my favourites of the year but I just thought the performance vocally was so strong. It was very convincing and I, th I felt like two points from the public was just criminally low for this even though I, do, I don't have this song up in my like top 15 I still think finishing 15th in this case was just a little bit too low and I do feel like it was just maybe the running order people didn't remember it because obviously it was s squashed in there with the UK which did a lot better as well I don't know but I hope next year Australia come back and try something new again and I hope that they do better next year in terms of the results. And of course, another one which I thought was pretty good. I got pretty much on the money with this one. Estonia, I predicted 15th and they came 13th, so quite close there. I remember someone in the comments, I think it was Kat Wellam, who's a regular commenter, and um, she told me to watch out for Estonia because she thought they would actually do quite well in the public vote and just genuinely get a good result and they did because they got in the top 10 of the public vote so the public really warmed to Stefan and they rewarded him with points so that's fantastic so yeah I was pleased that this one did well and then of course the UK coming second was fantastic I thought they would come fourth in the end but they came second so I was really really pleased with that of course because you know I think I was just always a bit too scared to say I think we have a chance of winning this year because I just didn't want to make a fool of myself firstly but also had this kind of case of just constantly being disappointed with our results and our entries year after year after year for all of the years I've been watching this contest since 2009 is when I really started getting into it and we did we came fifth of course in that year and then we had Josh the next year and I just remember cringing throughout that whole performance and feeling like what's happened we were actually pretty good last year we had Andrew Lloyd Webber and Jade from the Sugar Babes and now we've gone from that to last place it just felt you know that was the beginning of the downfall again and then we just continue to have terrible results so I was really really um worried about having any hope in Sam Ryder's song even though I still don't actually have this song high up in my rankings, it's not one of my favourites. When I first listened to it, I was slightly disappointed because I felt like we had someone with a beautiful voice in a song that I thought wasn't as good as the voice. And then it grew on me over the weeks. So I do feel really hopeful and I just feel so happy that we came second. And it's completely proved me wrong as well because I shouldn't be afraid to reach high with my predictions with the UK in the future because we are capable of doing well and we've shown people that we when we take the contest seriously for once we actually do well <laughs> it, it is about putting an effort in 
And when you put an effort in, you get your dividends. So, you know, I thought that was pretty good. Those are my general kind of observations about this, but I will be back soon to kind of give an overall review of the song contest, like I said, and then just talk about the UK in general, and then a post contest top 40. So I'll see you guys soon, and I hope you're all doing fabulously well. And yeah, I hope the post Eurovision depression isn't doing you too much harm. And I'll catch you guys later. Bye.